Well, hello. I haven't found myself working on this thing very much recently, but it's also been winter. Today is, I don't know, second fool's spring. Really the second weekend we've had above 40 degrees Fahrenheit this entire calendar year so far. So today my plan of action is get this door swapped out. All right, so if you guys have been watching Oval Bore for the last at least seven years, you'll be aware that I ran a BMW salvage dismantling and modification facility for about four years. And I left there after some turbulence with my business partner, but I was able to return and actually buy a door that came off of a car that I purchased <laughs> on behalf of the company many years ago. It was a little bit worse for the wear. There were some fairly shitty gouges on it up here, which were a lot worse when I got it. I did fill them with clear wet sand them and buff them down, but this door is completely rust free. And you might be saying, well, this car looks pretty nice and it does, but there is rust on the bottom of this door. It is the only rust on the entire car. There's none on the sill panels here, right above the rockers. There's none underneath. There's none on any of the other doors or body panels. And since this is now a manual, but always has been a facelift black on black sport package car, well worth making it nice. So <laughs> I just disconnected the battery, kind of bringing me back to my roots here with Mr. Wags one through three, but pretty easy. You just pull out the uh, carpeted partition. Then it's two plastic 10 mils to pull that out underneath the little uh, carpet pieces, release button right up here. And then the little one's got a vinyl tab on it. I'm going to be dealing with airbags. So of course you have to cut the power to the car. Almost hit the doors together. So it's not a terrible job to do. Um, unfortunately, this door isn't complete. It's missing some of the interior trim, but it does still have the tweeter pod, which is nice. I'll be able to get that out of the way to swap over my door mirror because it did not come with a mirror, even though it was supposed to be complete. <laughs> uh, it's also missing the bag and the interior door panel. So the harness and the regulator should be good. I'm counting on it. And uh, really all I should need to do is pull the door panel off, pull the bag out, disconnect the mirror. Um, then door brake, which you just pull back this rubber piece right here. And, oh, actually no. God, E46s were nice. There's a single E-Torx bolt for the door brake, and then a lot harder to get to. I might not even be able to film it. There it is right there. There's a, I think that's a seven or an eight mil, but there's a coarse screw um, that fastens the harness into the car. And then it's really easy if the car hasn't been messed with. There are two, I think 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom of both of those hinges. And then you can just lift the whole thing straight off and up. Final adjustments done with the 13 mils here, here. There's two more down there and there. So I shouldn't need to touch those, but again, this is kind of the first step into making this car nice enough to really command top dollar. After that, you probably saw a bunch of other parts on the ground behind the car. I'm going to be doing control arm bushings. Uh, all the ball joints feel good, so I'm not going to be doing control arms, I don't think. I do have upper and lower intake boots if I need them. Car really needs a CCV. Might need a valve cover gasket. And originally last fall, it was leaking quite a bit of fuel out of the injector seals. So I have those, but hasn't done it since. So again, if it's not broken, don't fix it on these cars. I also have a new OEM radiator under there. I have thermostats, water pumps here. So I checked the dates on everything on this car and it's definitely not original. It's about 2016. So it hasn't done many miles since the uh, cooling system. I still probably will put an expansion tank, water pump and thermostat in it just cause it's so easy. But uh, anyway, enough of me rambling, time to pull the door panel. And just in case you've never done an E46 door panel and you're watching this video for actual instruction, you pull off the interior wood trim piece by getting a trim tool underneath the back. Two Torx T25s. There are two more under plastic plugs here and here. And there's another one right in there. Once you've done that, get your bigger trim popper and start along the bottom edge, working your way around. And once all of the plastic clips are released, you lift up. 
And the final step, a little tab, pull that in, hinges out, and you can start untucking the door harness from the panel. Not too much going on. Two speakers and the small connector for the mirrors. All right, no interior light on this. Door panel is off. Nice. Next up for me is gonna be pulling the bag. I may have to save the sound deadening and I will look for the door module as well. But the tweeter pod, and actually mine is not in great shape, so I'm glad the new door has it. <sighs> Looks like more clips. I'll have to loosen this rain gutter uh, and get to, I believe, the 10 mils on the back of the mirror. And this is why rust sucks. It's like an iceberg. Tiny dimple on the outside of the door, rusted to shit on the inside. So there are actually three Torx T30s on the back of the mirror. Two of them hold the tweeter in, and the third one is right up in here. That is released. The mirror harness comes down to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that and feed it through the door. And after that, we will be going for the door brake, the electrical connector, and the pins to pull the actual door off. We'll get the new one set on and then we'll figure out what we need to transfer otherwise. So this is a little bit of a wiggle fest, but you have to pull outward at the top and push up. Once you get the rubber boot off, this whole gray plastic piece slides up and will release the door harness. You're probably gonna need an implement to get that done. And I know the space is tight, but you need to do that to get to the 10 mil pin down here. It's a Jeep thing. <laughs> so that's what you're working on right there. It's a tight fit, but it's definitely doable with the harness. And yeah, like I said, now we'll be fitting the new door, figuring out exactly what we need to transfer and transferring it. But I mean, so far we're like 20 minutes into this. It's really not too bad. All right, did a quick test before I buttoned everything up, but it's working perfectly. I did have to swap the trim piece because the other one said Harman Kardon on it. And this is not an HK car, thank goodness. So I'll finish buttoning it up, but even though the uh, harnesses are a different part number and this door, I guess, is off an 01, everything is working fine. All good. Oh, actually, no, one more thing. I have to swap out the lock cylinder. So in order to do that, I'll take a pick and open up this little guy right here. And inside you'll see a Allen key there. It's a four mil, I believe. Loosen that up and the cylinder will pop right out. And that's what the two piece clip looks like. So here's the cylinder that came with the door. Doesn't work with the key. Ta-da. So I just ran the DTCs, which show up occasionally, and it said vacuum valve, secondary air pump. It came out and I just touched that hose and it exploded. So I'm gonna see, I think I have some vacuum hose. Luckily it's hard pipe right there and a brass fitting right there. So I should be able to replace that. Got it replaced. I literally was looking around for 15 minutes before I looked right here and I saw the vacuum hose that came with the Megasquirt PNP for the E30. So that should be sorted now. Um, car does still need a CCV. I have to do that. I'm going to pull the DESA and check on it while I'm doing that. And then I'll probably replace the intake boots because they have to come out anyway. Again, very likely this car will get a water pump thermostat and expansion tank. Everything looks like it was done 2016. Like I said, has not done many miles since then, but... It's a nice car, so it deserves nice treatment. And then bonus content for those of you that actually stuck around to the end. I'm gonna find the autopsy, the pump. I came out of the new S54 for the LSB. That wasn't making any oil pressure at all when I installed it. So you can still see the assembly lube grease in there. So this thing was not pumping any oil. Face housing looks great. Gears look fabulous. So I guess we have to go deeper. Rear chamber looks great. The K 
key was still in the shaft. Again, these are the face gears on the front. The rear looks good. I'm not sure what I should be seeing with this valve here. I wonder if that's somehow stuck. It almost looks like the bypass is partially open. Well, there it is. I've closed it now, but in the middle of your screen there, where you see that little ridge, you can see just how screwed that thing is. So the bypass piston was jammed ever so slightly open. And if the engine was running, there might have been enough oil coming through that, but cranking over, this thing was never going to get oil pressure. So that's a bummer. I don't even know if I can get that piston out and replace it. I think this pump is just hosed. Put some ATF in there just to see if we can limber it up, but uh, I think that's that's just toast. <laughs> It'll make pressure now, but it won't relief, uh, relieve properly. And even if it does, it might jam the relief open again, so I would not trust this pump, unfortunately. And I'm betting that part number isn't for the um, housing, I bet it's for the whole pump. It's just too bad.